In 1947, the House Un-American Activities Committee begins a widely publicized probe to uncover subversive activities. Most alarming are the disloyalty charges leveled against Alger Hiss, a former State Department official. Documents that are coming out are adding to a mountain of circumstantial evidence that in fact Alger Hiss was a Soviet spy. Not a terribly important one, but nevertheless that he was guilty. Now, unfortunately though, that was taken at the time as evidence that the New Deal was communist. I don't think that that's true at all, but the case was freighted with this importance that really the espionage committed did not justify. To protect itself against Republican attack, at least in part, the Truman administration initiates a program to assess the loyalty of federal employees. Which basically meant that for the next 25 years, every federal employee was vulnerable to a full-scale investigation by the FBI. And of course, once a person was accused anonymously, there would then be a hearing before the loyalty board of that particular agency. But the person who was accused was never allowed to confront their accusers. And when this issue was brought before the Supreme Court in a famous case involving Dorothy Bailey in 1948, five of the justices basically said, the Bill of Rights does not apply because this is not a criminal proceeding. Dorothy Bailey is not going to be sent to prison. She's not going to be in any way punished. She's only going to lose her job and her reputation. The anti-communist frenzy grows so intense that Congress passes the McCarran Internal Security Act over Truman's veto. And a little-known New York couple, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, are charged with treasonous activities, stealing atomic secrets. Julius ran a spy ring for the Soviets, and he recruited Ethel's brother, David Greenglass, who was working in the machine shop at Los Alamos. And he did get some sketches from David about one of the lenses that was being used in the atomic bomb. So Julius was guilty of espionage. Ethel apparently was just um, an accomplice in that she knew what he was doing, but she was not involved at all. Um, we know from documents that are coming out now that what the FBI decided to do was to encourage Ethel's brother to manufacture evidence against Ethel so that then they could use Ethel as a lever against Julius. And that backfired because neither Ethel nor Julius would talk at all and they were both executed. Documents also confirm that the Soviets did have access to atomic secrets. They got most of their good information from two scientists who were working on the projects, Theodore Hall and Klaus Fuchs. The scientist, Theodore Hall, was never caught, and Klaus Fuchs got 15 years. So it was really a disproportionate punishment that Julius, and especially Ethel Rosenberg, received. <laughs>